Now the second story in our series on the No Child Left Behind law. Tonight is on what some failing schools in San Diego are doing to meet the law's standards. Once again, the reporter is the NewsHour Special Correspondent for Education, John Merrow. You cannot kill our momentum, you cannot stop or kill our spirit, and you will not stop our determination. January 7th, 2005, a school board meeting in San Diego, California. We will clean the house you refuse to clean. These impassioned parents were fighting to fix their children's schools, schools that were not only failing, but had been allowed to keep failing year after year after year. Good morning. Schools like Keeler Middle School, where in 2004, Patricia Ladd took over as principal. Good morning. How are you? My first day here, I thought, oh my goodness, what am I in for? Good morning. At any point in time, I would see 20 to 100 students just roaming the campus. Good morning. How are you? Many stories of setting fires in the bathrooms, destroying property. Good morning, how are you? A campus of chaos. Violence also plagued Gompers Middle School just a few miles away, where in 2004, Vincent Riverall took over as principal. I remember meeting my first student who came up to me and said, why are you wearing a suit? It's just gonna get ripped when you break up a fight. I need everybody listening and no one should be talking. At both schools, more than half the teachers were leaving every year. Many of those who stayed, says Gompers teacher Tracy Johnston, had simply stopped caring. They had been doing the same thing for 35 years. They didn't like our kids. They liked the paycheck. What it all added up to was students who weren't learning. On California's state proficiency tests, three quarters of the students at Gompers and Keeler were consistently failing. The federal law called No Child Left Behind says that after five straight years of failing test scores, schools have to make major changes in the way they're run. It's a process the law calls restructuring. The law spells out restructuring options that include taking control of the school away from its local school district. At most of the 1,300 schools nationwide that have had to restructure so far, that hasn't happened. I'd like to thank the Board of Directors for being here today. For but in San Diego, the frustrated parents, teachers, and principals at Gompers and Keeler saw the radical restructuring options of No Child Left Behind as a golden opportunity. Open the gates of wisdom. Congratulations. That they used to turn their schools around. They were supported by a reform-minded and controversial superintendent, Alan Burson. It was an opportunity to start a process from the bottom up to say, if you give the facts to parents and to the community and you create a genuine process of involvement and education, uh, that perhaps people would make a decision that in fact there needed to be more dramatic change than ordinarily is the case. And that's what happened. Perfect, looking good. The federal law called No Child Left Behind was intended to shake things up, to force people to fix failing schools. In San Diego, at Gompers and Keeler, that is precisely what happened. But the way that the school system has reacted to what these two schools have done is raising questions in San Diego. Is the system more committed to the students' interests or its own? Flashback to September 2004. Keeler had just been forced to restructure under No Child Left Behind. Gompers had just been forced to restructure, too. To figure out just how to do that, the principals at both schools put together teams of teachers and parents. We gathered together what we called a work group, and we started talking about a dream school. What are the qualities of a dream school? They decided that more than anything else, they needed a staff of highly committed teachers. But the union contract with the San Diego School District made it hard for principals to hire the teachers they wanted. Case in point, when I was staffing the school as a first-year principal here, I interviewed a candidate. I decided not to hire that candidate. Two days later, based on seniority, that teacher was at my staff development without me knowing it and said to me, I was assigned here anyway. Union seniority rights also made it easy for good teachers to leave a school after just a few years. You could not build a foundation for teaching and learning when you turn over your teachers every year. 
Superintendent Burson asked the teachers' union to grant a waiver of some of its rights, but the union didn't give it to him. To many parents at Gompers and Keeler, like Michelle Evans, that was the last straw. We needed something radical. You know how they have cancer surgery, you have to have radical, something radical needed to happen. The radical step that the working groups chose would enable them to break away from the San Diego School District and thereby free themselves from its union contract. They would convert their schools to what are called public charter schools, schools that run independently from the school board under the provisions of a contract called a charter. Charter is not necessarily the answer. I mean, but I there would be hurdles to clear to get the necessary approval from the San Diego School Board. Supporters would have to collect hundreds of parent signatures. It took us four hours a day for four months to do this. And even collect the signatures of a majority of teachers, the very people who would lose their union rights if the schools went charter. But the charter supporters cleared that hurdle, too. You did it. And on March 1st, 2005, the San Diego School Board finally gave its okay. Good morning, Good morning. At Gompers, Vincent Riverol and his team have made sweeping changes. Every student here is now required to wear a uniform. Look on the charts that we made yesterday. To try of to the 50 away. teachers who worked here before the conversion, 44 were replaced. One of the six who stayed is Lisa Young. Every single teacher and staff member that you see on this campus wants to be here and decided to be here and is very motivated. Number one! Number one! Attendance is up. Suspensions have plummeted. Over at Keeler, a similar transformation has been taking place. We're going to walk to class and we'll get started on the test this morning, all right? You guys ready for this? Yes! Yeah. All right. No longer bound by district regulations, Keeler's teachers say they can now tailor what they do in the classroom to better meet their students' needs. Can anybody make a prediction of what you think is going to happen next in this text? Stacy Roth teaches eighth grade humanities, which combines English and social studies. She uses current events in some of her classes, like the controversy over radio host Don Imus. We read several articles with differing points of view, and then I had them write NBC to tell them whether they thought I should be fired or not. But wait a minute, that's not part of some state curriculum. What about? It's writing a business letter. It's reading te text and thinking about it critically and then writing a business letter. It's all in the eighth grade standards. It's, so, it's the way you use them to encourage kids to write to a specific audience so that their voice can be heard. What do you know now about working for change? What I know now... Keeler is especially proud that its student test scores have gone up enough to satisfy the requirements of No Child Left Behind. Yet, despite their success, the charter school okay. principals and their supporters feel that the public school system has been hostile. In 2005, the school board fired Superintendent Alan Burson. His replacement, Dr. Carl Cohn, is an advocate of keeping schools within the system. Superintendent Cohn declined our request for an interview. Is the district playing fair with you? No, they're not. Patricia Ladd has a simple explanation for the school system's attitude. It's about money. It's about money. Enrollment's dropping throughout the city. The district is losing millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. How much does San Diego Unified School District lose every time a kid signs up for a killer or another charter? Approximately $6,000 per child. Between Keeler and Gompers, that adds up to an almost $8 million loss every year. Ladd points to a letter the school district sent that steers families in the Keeler neighborhood to a district middle school called Bell. Bell had more than four times as many suspensions as Keeler and lower test scores. The letter was signed by San Diego's deputy superintendent, Dr. Gino Flores. We, as a school system, are required to offer a place for their students to attend. In other words, we cannot require a parent to go to a charter school. Parents can choose to go there on their own. Is Bell a better school than Keeler? For any student, every student? I mean, I think those are the kinds of choices that we're asking parents to make, which is, which school would you like for your child to attend? Here in red is Keeler, and here is Gompers Charter Middle School, and here... The school district recently announced a plan that could draw even more students away from the charter schools. 
The district is going to expand seven elementary schools that are close to Gompers and Keeler to include the sixth, seventh, and eighth grades. The seven schools you're converting are all clustered right around the charter schools. Is that a coincidence? Is it a coincidence? We are providing opportunities for parents to make decisions. Former Superintendent Burson says he's not surprised by what the district is doing. The point of charter schools is to compete and to force uh, regular districts to compete with charter schools. The competition is now here. You shouldn't expect your competitor to treat you with kid gloves. So go out there and compete. <laughs> OK, very good. So now what is our next step? Let's take a look at this coming school year because of No Child Left Behind. At least a thousand more schools across the country may have to restructure. Who remembers that word from yesterday, profitable, and can tell me? Gompers and Keeler establishes that uh, this is not rocket science. You begin to see parents and teachers taking action in the way that we constantly talk about. Let the teachers and the parents decide. Uh, most people who say that really don't expect parents and teachers to take charge. But discontent is a terrific engine for social justice. And that's what's happened here. This summer, the principals of Gompers and Keor, along with teachers and parents, are going out in the community, spreading the word about their schools and working hard to recruit new students. Tomorrow night, John will look at how some of the nation's best teachers are responding to No Child Left Behind. You can watch last night's report and learn more about the No Child Left Behind law on our website, as always, at pbs.org.